Hello, Power App Enthusiasts. Welcome back again to the Power App Tutorial channel. Exciting news because we're going to be jumping on the new Microsoft Power Up Final Challenge for 2025 slash 2026. This was actually shared by a fellow subscriber. Shout out to Adisa Akiwomi. Do you want to jump into the project brief? And it's just basically Contoso High School has been facing increasing challenges with parking availability, leading to complaints from both teachers and visitors. So I guess this concerns the leadership team seeks a better understanding of parking usage and occupancy. So to achieve this, they have requested the development of a simple system that enables staff and visitors to request parking on a daily basis. Additionally, the system should facilitate the inspection of parking spaces, that's an important part, by a member of the staff to verify help, understanding who is in the parking. This will be used to help improve parking management, enhance accessibility, and reduce unauthorized use. So they have limited parking spaces, and we're going to be creating an app that's going to be managing those limited parking spaces for our Contoso High School. All right, so there are some also high level requirements. Um, so it says using the resources which you've been supplied, you need to build the following uh, power platform solution called Parking Challenge with a data model comprising of three tables. And this were provided in the resources. So we have a vehicle table parking request and a parking expression in CSV, a model-driven app to enter visitor and staff parking requests on a daily basis, a Canvas app to be used by the parking inspector, that is a staff member, to log parking inspections, and then a Power Ultimate Cloudflow to confirm parking requests. Then finally, we're gonna be creating a Power BI report which is required to support the organization in managing their parking more effectively. And then we have to create a video explaining your solution and some other stuff. So in the end, you should have, your solution should look like this with seven components in all in total. As you can see, there are three tables, one Canvas app, one site map, and a model-driven app with your Cloudflow. This is all aside from the Power BI report. And with that, I come to the end of the reading of the documentation. From this point on, we're going to be using my own curated to-do list for this solution. So I've come up with a to-do list that we're going to use to create the solution. We're going to start with um, OFLC creating the solution first, and then we'll create the publishers. And then we'll create the tables and columns, and then the model-driven app. And then we we'll check and confirm the settings. And then we we'll import the tables using import from CSV. And we're going to do it in order. So vehicle says parking request and parking inspection. And then number seven, we'll configure the views, including the quick view. We add some calculator column and uh, auto indexing. And we might add some extra views. So there are some views that are in the documentation, but we might add some extra. And then we'll configure the forms and then we'll create. By that time, we're, we should actually have a model driven app complete. So, by the time we do all this, we should have the model driven app complete by nine. And then after that, we'll move on to step 10, which is to create the Canvas app. And then we'll create the Power Automate. And then we'll finally, we'll jump on the Power BI. So, this is what we're going to be doing to our own. And if you guys are excited, let's just jump right into it. Now, if you want to see a demo, because I've already created the app already, I, I can show you the demo real quick. And we are in our my parking challenge solution, and we have ten in total. The region I had seven, but as you can see, we have like sort of resources. Now we might have more than this by the time we're done with our solution, but um, right now we have ten. 
And if we go straight into our application, so we can demo, let's demo the model driven at first. So for the model driven app, it has the vehicle table, the parking request table, and the token inspection. And as you can see, all of them have all of their data complete. Let's start with the vehicle table first. Um, it just has active view, no other view except for this active view. And then when we click into it, um, it has the regular form, which has the vehicle name, make, model, and the uh, vehicle owner. And that's for the first one. The next, and if you uh, look to the right, we have the vehicle image. And now not all the vehicles have an image. So I just selected some few vehicles that I'm going to be displaying. Those are the ones that have image. And then right down, we have two subgrids. We have the parking request subgrid, which shows the related vehicles parking requests over time as you can see right here this is in relation to the vehicle and the next one is the parking inspection so this shows the related parking inspections that was done on the vehicle over time right and then the next one is the parking request so for the parking request table um, we have the active parking request and when you click into it, we have another one called the active parking request today, which is going to be shown on the records for the parking request for that particular day. So if we go back to our active parking request and click right into it, so this is basically the form right here. It has the vehicle, the parking request date and time. It has the parking request name up top. And then on the right, we're going to have a quick view that displays the related vehicles information so that's for the parking request for the parking inspection we also have a, an active parking inspection and if you click into it there is also a view that shows the active parking inspections for that day so that's going to populate when we have new parking inspections for that day and then when we click into the form itself so we have the inspection dates the vehicle and the parking requests and then up top we have the parking inspection name and on the right we have the related vehicle information and the related parking request information displayed in a quick view we jump into demoing the canvas app let's add some data for our canvas app the easiest way to do that is to go to our parking request we're just going to add data for this three requests right here uh, the date is 426. We're just going to adjust this to 427, which is today's date for the first one. That's 427. Let's do this for, this, for the next one. Finally, ABCX. All right, so with that, when we jump into active parking request today, you can see we have more data here. And that's going to translate to parking inspection is going to also have data because remember, these are old records that already had parking requests completed. We just updated the parking request date. All right, so we have data now for our Canvas app. Let's just jump right into it and see how it looks. All right, so in our Canvas app, uh, let's open the parking inspection canvas app and i'm going to open it in edit mode so to have more control all right so we finally opened and let's just expand this a little bit should be fine okay so we have the home screen which has a review screen and a new inspection screen we have the review screen which has the three new data that we added into it for the inspections we have a new inspection screen and a new vehicle screen for new vehicles so let's just go to the home screen and press play so from the home screen if you click on the review screen it should take you to the review screen where you can you know review what's been done then you click on the back if you want to go back 
Now, let's say you want to do a new inspection. You click on new inspection. We takes you to the new inspection screen. And then from here, you can actually see a list of all the vehicles. You can search for the vehicle that you're looking for. And then once you pick the vehicle, um, so let's say we pick ABC123X, it's going to show you the inspection date, which is today, the particular time, which is which is the current time. And then it's going to show you the request related to the vehicle. Also, it's going to give you the vehicle name as a confirmation and the time the request was completed. And if you hit submit, it will submit uh, the inspection that was done and then it will populate it here in the table. Obviously, we already had another record, so it's just creating another record on top of that because we created another request. Another thing you can do is in, in our new inspection screen, let's say, for example, or you, the inspector goes out and they see a vehicle that is not there, they can click on the create new vehicle and that will take them to the create new vehicle screen. Now in a create new vehicle, you can add a new vehicle. Let's just call this test one. And test make test model. You can add an image if you want to, and then when you click save, it saves the vehicle and takes you to the home screen. And then if you click on the new inspection screen, you can actually search for the vehicle you just added. So if you click down and scroll all the way down, you will see the new vehicle you just added. You can add that in here. Now, when you add it in here, it won't have its own parking request, which is fine because the way we set it up is that if you create a new vehicle and you hit submit, well, we're going to patch a new parking request to that particular vehicle. So when you hit submit, it's just going to create a new parking request for that vehicle. This time around, it's going to add uh, an invalid parking tag to it, so it's, you can differentiate between the difference between, you know, somebody who will actually reserve the parking spot and a, and a vehicle that just you just found there. So that's the demo for the Canvas app. Let's jump into the Cloudflow, which is the last demo. So for the Cloudflow, which is called the Parking Request Notification. When we click into it, I tried my best to not make it too complicated. Because, well, when you click into the Cloudflow itself, this is what I've come up with as the most reasonable. So we're going to be using uh, when a row is added into the table. And then we're going to get the row by ID. So we need the vehicle information. And then we're going to initialize three variables first name, first date time, and the request for the vehicle license plate, which we're going to be using in our email. And then we're going to use list rows to cap based on the conditions of the flow. So we're going to cap the list. So you can't, you can't order a request for more than. You know, we have only limited spaces, so we're going to cap it at 15. That's the first cap. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to set a condition. So if it's over 15, let me reduce this a little so you can see what's going on. Here we go. All right, so if it's over, if the condition capacity is over 15, what we're going to do is we're going to send an email saying that the capacity is full. So that's what the email is going to do. It's going to send an email saying that the capacity is full. Sorry. You know? But if the condition is correct, we're going to do another check. So we're going to check if the cutoff mark is at 5 p.m. So there's another rule that the cutoff mark is you can't order space for more than after 5 p.m. So that's the second condition we're going to check. And if that condition, we're going to send an email 
saying too late, or we're going to confirm that it was completed. And so if you test this flow, I already did some tests. But if you test this flow, so you can see everything works out. In the end, you would get to your email. Uh, okay, so let me show you what the email looks like. All right, so I'm in my email, and this is the this is what the email looks like. So it's just uh, please be advised that your packing request for vehicle test today, which request ID has been granted. We tested at so sort of time many times come to so high school with a small signature all right so that's just basically what the flow does and if we go back this and that's all um, the whole solution and then the next one we're going to demo is going to be the power bi but that's going to be a separate video but um if you guys are enjoying you enjoyed the demo and you're ready to build this um, and i'll see you on the next one